I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Brandon, I wanted to start this episode off by making a small correction about last week's episode. Oh, yes. Uh, so I said that uh, Butchcraft Kelso was the person who suggested the uh, the topic. I'm pretty sure it was Lear. One of our our Discord members. Yes, is it Lear or Lur? Lur Lur the the witch. It might be Lur. It might be Lur. L e r. I'm I'm bad at reading. L L e r. I thought it was L i r. I'm gonna look. L i. Oh, we're doing so bad from using the memories. Brandon, we're we're doing so bad. Lur the forest witch. Lur the forest witch. All right. Yes. Lur the forest witch. So so we we probably shouldn't do things from memory as like we that's that's why we write copies. (laughs) <laughs> honestly that right there is enough of a reason like that's that that whole thing is pretty much an example of why you shouldn't rely on your memory to do fucking anything yeah fair so thank we, you lure the forest witch for recommending boogeyman and also being the most wholesome member of the discord channel yeah honestly probably the most yeah so far um like I think, right? Like, well, Lur just showed up and started sharing their artwork, and we were like, "Oh, yeah. nice." And then, and then, other things happened. Yeah, well, we're, it's the the main channel is generally cursed because it's gener- it's just always it is, cursed. It is, it's it always is cursed. pretty much always cur- cursed. There is a cursed channel, but now they're they're generally co- cursed. Yeah, I'll have to find so. some stuff for the cursed channel. Please don't. Please yeah, don't. We, uh, we already we already have somebody who's pretty much the dedicated cursed person, and like, if you start posting things to cursed, he's going to try to assert dominance. And like, I don't know if we need him to assert more dominance over cursed. He owns cursed. It is his board. So oh, can like, we just rename the channel? I could. I could. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> it is possible. These are a thing. This is a thing that can happen. Um. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, no, let's let's not. Please don't. don't. Don't antagonize the bear. Don't challenge. Do not challenge his supremacy. Uh and oh, welcome back uh from uh, uh the break to everybody. We we you know, it was the, it was the holidays and New Year's times. Yeah, we got, we got things to do. We 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 we, I, we we did some things and I had to get tires and uh, uh there's a baby now. Um Yeah. So I played a lot of Monster Hunter. Is oh which one? The new one? Rise. Monster Hunter Rise. Is it good? I like it. I put nice. twenty seven hours into it. Damn. I've been using I've been using the insect glaive as my main weapon and it's really fun. There's... It took me a while to figure out that that was the one I enjoyed. There ah oh, I that's what I miss about Monster Hunter. Oh, I wish uh, eventually I'll be able to play again. <laughs> It, to, to anyone who's friends with me uh, or, like, in Discord groups with me, it looks like I'm playing a lot of games. It's just me having the game loaded and being optimistic that I will be able to get, like, 15 minutes to myself to play the game. I'm not really playing the games. Um, uh, on the other hand, I am playing the games. Because yeah, I finished brag about all of my, I finished all of my, my immediate deliverables. So, like, I don't have anything that's, like, knocking on my door. But is so the I rail empty? The is the rail empty? What rail? You don't have a rail? What rail? Oh, well, yeah, no, the rail's not empty. What, what, what are you doing playing games? It's it's like a month or two away. So, uh, like, I don't care. Okay. Like, like I, it's like a month or two away, and I have to get feedback on some things. So, like, uh, I, can, I can put it off a okay. little bit. Okay. And, Fair. like, most Fair of the enough. stuff I've, I've already written, like, half of the one deliverable that's coming. I've started to, to prototype my, like, to, to lay out my next study. So, like, I've got shit to, on, on lock. I'm just lazy. Fair. All right. Nice. Oh, did he watch the new Matrix movie? No, I didn't. It's bad. But the first half hour is really, it's one of the best first half hours of any movie. After that, they got what? really ambitious. 
And they did the thing where they don't show you things happening. They just s- describe it or say that it had happened. Hot. Because they got way, like, I'm sure it was a great script if it was, like, four movies. <laughs> but then they didn't have time because it's one movie. So oh, there was... ignore everything after that. The first half is, like, really cool and it's, like, a, a Deadpool movie. They literally, this won't spoil anything, to set it up, Keanu Reeves is... um. Like, in this movie, he's a game designer that created the Matrix video games, and his boss calls him up to the office, and they're like, we need a sequel to the Matrix. And he's like, but why? And they go, well, our parent company, Warner Brothers, is about to lose the contract if we don't make another game. So we we have to write it. So that they're basically explaining why they made a new Matrix movie, and then they start going into, like, uh, clearly the same conversations they had in a writer's room. But it's on happening on the screen, so they're like they're like we're writing this because we have to because of contracts, and then, uh, Damn it. it's it it's it's so good, and then and then they when it turns into the real part of the movie after like the first thirty minutes, then mm-hmm. they're like oh this happened, and then you you just like, okay, and then like they'll li- like explain a thing they have to do, and then start. Mo- like physically like we have a quest the quest is to do a and then you see them walk and then it jump cut and they're like isn't it great that we just completed doing the thing and you're like wait what you're like wait you just you just cut out the i was like it sounded so cool and then you just cut it out <laughs> weird it's because it was too ambitious yeah i i guess like were there at least cool slow motion fight scenes they're, they're. I mean, the John, impact is probably the impact John. is probably reduced because we've like every movie has done the Matrix at this point. So, so, so in the first thirty minutes, they're like, so what does everyone think about the Matrix? And this is the, the like the writers' room scene, and they're, they're like, mm-hmm. bullet time. We have to do something new, and it can't be bullet time, but it's gonna be better than bullet time. So you know what the uh, bullet, the bullet time, the game changer for this new I Matrix wanna, movie is? I don't think I want to know now. Double bullet time. So it's bullet time. What? So 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 you know how there's the bullet time? Imagine if yeah. some and it's because Neo can move so fast. Well, Neil Patrick okay. Neil Patrick Harris has double bullet Wait. time. Neil Patrick Harris is in the movie. Neil Wait. Patrick Harris is the is the main <laughs> antagonist. What? And his his cool power is he has double bullet time. So when Neo moves to go do bullet time, he can actually move like normal speed in bullet time. Because he's double bullet time. Wait. <laughs> and oh, that's a spoiler. Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That has got to be the goddamn dumbest thing I've ever heard. Du- double bullet time. <laughs> uh, like, like the least. Okay, let me let me rephrase that. I've heard a lot of dumb shit in the past year. Yeah. So not the dumbest thing I've ever heard. However. The least harmful, dumbest shit I've ever heard. Yeah, and it, it, the way the first part of the movie was written, it makes me want to think that it's very intentional that they just decided to go a double bullet time. Because they like they talk about it at the beginning. It's very clear they're writing it only because they have to. Um, so they went double bullet time. <laughs> <laughs> Did they actually call it double bullet time? No, they didn't call it that. But they explained that it is. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know what's also really terrifying? So I was thinking about this. I was talking to Christine about this. Uh, that movie has come out in a world where Red Pill is a like common no- nominee. Uh, yeah. I think right? they, I like, think they might reference that in the movie as well. They okay, might. It's very like, self-aware in the beginning. Cuz like that's a thing now. Yeah. Oh, also they work it with the robots some of them like they became sentient and now they're their friends. So there's like cute pet robots that help them and there's like big spooky robots that are like I'll let you know if one of the bad robots is coming to find you guys. It's a whole thing. <laughs> uh, okay. 
it, it sounds pretty predictable because like if my memory's correct the first set of matrix movies is like coded trans like coded discussions about like being transgender that's another thing so they discuss what the first movies are about and what people think they're about in the movie because i talk uh, about it being like metaphors for capitalism and metaphors for uh uh, transgender and 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 all this. Yeah. So they they in the writers' room scene they discuss all of that. <laughs> it's John. The first thirty minutes of this movie is perfect, and explains clearly why everything after it is going to be exactly what you're going to think it's going to be. <laughs> okay. Well, at least at least they have enough self awareness to tell me how they're go why they're going to make things worse. Yeah. Yeah, they're literally, they literally, like, every, all the, when you, oh no, all of the thoughts that you have in your head, they say on the screen back to you, and that's why I think it's amazing. Brandon, what do you yeah. think the budget for that movie was? Just really quick, it's what was probably, the budget for that movie? probably disgusting. I'm gonna say, is it, is it, I wanna say it's greater than 200 million. Just less, just less. Just 190 less. million. Oh, Brandon. wow. Brandon, what do you think its box office was? Box office? Because The Matrix is a hot property, right? These, right? Hot to property these days. Here's, here's the problem. Does HBO, the home box office, count as a box office sale? Or Because it's going to eat uh... shit. Cause, cause all the, it's going to eat dog shit if they don't count HBO Max subs as box office tickets. I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the data. I'm. I want to say that, that it is. it it did not because don't, don't they want to make up like half of the total cost on the opening day or else it's a flop or so, so, something along those something lines. Something like that. It's something like that. I um, want to say it probably did like 190. I want to say it did like 70 million. A little more. It, it well. In domestic, it did thirty million. Oh, to, they, they, they. So movies aren't made for domestic. <laughs> yeah, domestic was thirty, international was seventy-five. Okay, that sounds that sounds better. So one hundred and six. So Do- not a complete flop, but not great. Domestic is usually always terrible. <laughs> Look up any yeah. movie. Oh, <laughs> uh, and um. If you're new to us, <laughs> welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and I'm definitely going to name this episode something like Brandon Spoils the Matrix, because yeah. I don't want to deal with that shit. I mean, or we can. But like I don't wanna I don't wanna spoil something for someone. I mean, like, it's only a matter of time before Spider Man gets spoiled for me and like I've kinda come to terms with that. Yeah, like here's the problem with spoiling the Matrix is I think my spoiler makes people more likely to watch it. Right? Because if you hear there's a new Matrix, That's you're like probably you're, true. you're like no, you're like, Yeah, but nobody asked for that. They're just doing it because they have to, because they'll lose the the the, the rights for it. And then you go, but wait. Neil Patrick Harris is the bad guy. Now you're on board. Now you want to go see the yeah, new Matrix. I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of wanted to open up the movie and s- scroll to Neil Patrick Harris scenes after that. Yeah, that's totally fair. Uh, I won't tell well, you what his p- role outside of being the double bullet time guy is, but it's interesting. It, it's it's a cool way to... to it's, it's predict... Everything goes exactly from the moment you have a thought you're like, that... And then it happens on the screen. It's like they, they can read your mind as you're watching the movie. So, Brandon, we've been talking about The Matrix for 14 minutes, which I we, think is more time than anyone has talked about The Matrix since the early aughts. S- s- yeah, fair. E- even <laughs> so, while they were making it. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, so let, let's get it to our, uh, our, 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 our cryptid then. Our cryptid right. then. Um so we're going to talk about the uh, the Doerku. Uh, it's named translating to water dog, 
door being an old uh, Irish word for water, ra- it's rarely used today. Like only in like okay. old old timey poems and shit. And ku meaning uh, hound or dog. Uh, it's also got a lot of other names that are regional old Irish forms of the word. So they're all kind of like similar. They're just regional versions of those Irish words. Um, okay. But it's typically described as a large otter, uh, sometimes called the king otter. It's about seven feet long and it's said to be a able... A large otter? A large otter. It's just a big old otter. It's uh, you know seven foot long. Is said to be able to move as quickly as a horse while in the water and it also seems to acquire a taste for blood. Um, it's said... On, as otters do. As otters do. It's If you give an otter a cookie is how the old robot chicken went. Um, yeah, well, no, if you do give an otter a cookie, they will take over the world. They will. That's honestly a fact, as we've all seen from the Otter Wars of uh, 1912. I said the old, uh, the uh, give a mess a cookie thing at work, and uh, someone had, had was unaware it was a thing. For, they, they just never saw Robot Chicken. <laughs> well, that's Be- also not from Robot Chicken. You know that, right? The develop a taste for human blood part? Oh, the develop a taste for human blood part is absolutely from Robot Chicken. Yeah, but, so I did I did the robot the, the, the oh, saying okay. isn't I I did the robot chicken version. Okay, okay. And I was individual- about to say, Brandon, because I was like, you realize that's like an old like that's a story like a a children's book, right? Like yeah. the uh, yeah, it was it was an older uh, gentle mustachio gentleman heard me say it. And the funny thing is, it it described the point clearly and it, it, it fit why i was saying it but they were also like what <laughs> like just i mean baffled i mean you work for a defense contractor basically so like anytime you describe anything give a mouse a cookie it'll get a taste for blood is probably going to be on topic yeah usually mo- mo- like, lo- like, lo- like, a lot let, of the time let's be real it's probably gonna be at least a little on topic yeah 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 it's I, my head just went to some other places that I shall yeah. refrain from microphoning. Um, yeah, yeah, you probably shouldn't. Probably shouldn't. <laughs> I'm gonna assume you probably shouldn't. Yeah, it shouldn't. So, so what was the name of this? The door. The door coup. Um, door it, coup. It's okay. spelled Dober Chu, but I heard an Irish person say it door coup, so I'm gonna say it the way the Irish person said it. I mean, uh, that's that's fair. Um, but if if so, if you're so listening to this and you want to look it up it's d-o-b-h-a-r hyphen c-h-u dober chu um not jimmy chews the shoes but dober ku um this is said on occasion uh it, it's called the irish crocodile uh and it likes to run around lakes mostly staying in the northern regions of ireland uh the door ku much like the hunters from halo uh, travel in pairs with their mate, and oh, okay. when one is injured uh, during a hunt, it lets out a loud whistle, and that calls its uh, partner over to help. So very much like the hunters from Halo. Uh, Pretty much, I mean, the hunters from Halo like will also freak out if you kill their uh, if you kill their if they partner, kill kill their so. partner, they they go harder. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the 1896 edition of the Journal of Royal Society of Antiquities Antiquaries of Ireland. Um, because all old-timey books are a very long title. Uh, one Miss Walkington, uh, Walkington described the creature as half wolf dog and half fish. Um, and we're going to get to her story a little bit later. Uh, replying to her... What is... Wait, wait. So, wolf dog. Okay, so wolf dog meaning... Um, I think like, that like just means like feral a, a dog. hybrid, right? Yeah. Where, well, well, like... Well, like, there's hybrid oh. wolf dogs, right? Like, yeah. so I remember one time at my parents' house, there was, like, a very beautiful dog that walked down the, the road. But it yeah. was, like, huge, right? Um, And I guess I guess my mom at the time, my, my mom at the time, as though I had any other moms, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, she, she said that it, it was likely, like, a, a wolf dog, right? And, like... Those fuckers are big and a little imposing. I yeah. love wolves. Don't don't get me wrong. Like, I got a blanket with a wolf on it. Oh, so, um, okay. I I opened up the document as I yes. was va- vamping about that. I am now looking at the picture of the Doberchu, Doberku. Yes, Doberku. What the fuck? 
like a big angry otter. I, I don't even know if I'd call it an otter. It reminds me of the Nezua from uh from Monster Hunter, which is like the weird slimy white thing that has no eyes. Uh it, it's it's honestly horrifying. Yeah, how it's they, badass. How do they get Wolf Dog out of that? I don't see any Wolf Dog in that whatsoever. There, well, that's to be fair. That's just someone trying to make it look like metal, brutal. You know. Okay, Th- that's okay. A, but th- like, that's an internet drawing. <laughs> that particular one is pretty fucking metal. Yeah, that's why I picked it. It's like it's cool. It's it's like a hate snake. It's a hate. It's a it's, it's a, a hate snake. Um, a furry hate snake. It's a hate snake. It's, it's a furry a hate, hate snake. <laughs> it, it's it's a cousin to the ferret. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, fine. The the hate snake is what Peter North calls his donger. Um, replying to her, a Mrs. H. Chichester Hart wrote, um, Boondor legend, uh, in answer to Miss L. A. Walkington's query on page eighty four. I've heard that. Uh, at Ballyshannon, a few miles from Boondor, and these are local areas in, in Ireland. Um, mm-hmm. The following account of the uh, Dara Cow, uh, as er- was pronounced in that district, so that's one of those regional names for the Dorku. Okay, um, so that's that's a that's another way of calling it the Dorku. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he was the king of all lakes and the father of all the otters. Uh, he can run his muzzle through rocks, and he's as big as five or six otters. My informant um, thought he was long dead, uh, and I, um, I typed so, up the little snippet so there. So wait a second. So all right, why is so? Is my understanding correct that this is like a relatively small animal, seven feet long? Okay, Se- okay. seven feet. Yeah, that's that's pretty big. I, I it, it's fairly big, but like the king of all lakes. Like, yeah, so that's a that's a pretty lofty title. It, it this one's kind of interesting because it's a cryptid that then also has some folklore stuff tied to it. So the king of all Wait. lakes, father of all otters, is like folklore built around the cryptid that is the Doraku. Okay, so so that's that. So so then sightings of it. Okay, so is the Doraku like? historic like how far back did you find the doraku going uh so Roughly. these were written in 1896 um okay. so, seven, so it was it was 19th century at least 1722 i want to say is uh i'm just scrolling down i want to say okay. there is an event in 1722 so it's so if if we go it, from then it's about a hundred year old um thing okay so but did the doraku exist in that, like, when that first event happened. When that first event happens, the Doraku is a actual creature, not a thing of folklore. Okay, and then so this the telling years... 100 years later, it's okay. gone to uh, the King of All Lakes. So it's kind of like an okay. interesting tri- pivot, or, or Listen, over time it transitions from animal to folklore. I, I gotta say, gotta respect the hustle of the Doraku. Like, gotta respect that hustle. It's, Going from from just a gutter snake, basically, to being the king of all lakes and the father of all otters, which, like, damn, right? Getting yeah. around. Yeah. Although, getting the fuck around. It, yeah. Upgrades. Upgrades. It got yeah. a promotion. Um, But I also have one more question. Yes. What does he can run his muddle, muzzle through rocks mean? I think it means he can, like, burrow through the ground, and his head is so strong he can smash rocks. Got it. So he's a tremor's worm. Yeah, he's a tremor's worm. Okay. Got it, got it. Okay, cool. You can continue. I I just needed to clarify a few things. Okay, yeah. So uh, Miss Hart was replying to Miss Walkington, who was asking the antiquary for uh, some light to be shed on the legend um, she had heard, which is still the most infamous story of the Dorku. Also, the um, antiquary is, it's an interesting thing that they did back then. It's not a newspaper. It's, imagine mm-hmm. if, it, it's like a, like a regional version of like a text forum that would be published and made available to everybody. So you could just say something to this and they would collect all of them for like 
a given period of time huh. and then group all of them together and publish it, you could then read it. And if you could write back to the antiquary, say on page 84, this person wrote this. I have a correction, a comment, a question specifically for that person. Give it to the antiquary. They hold on to it for a while, then publish that again. And every, it's like a cool, like, f- old so it's tiny, 19th century Twitter. It's yeah, exactly. It's 19th century Twitter. <laughs> and these are like, I, man, when people start subtweeting other people, whew, that's, that's sub antiquary other people. Yeah, th- that that th- 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 <laughs> like this. What we just read was a reply to the original tweet of the first lady, and they're all scanned well, well, and available, which makes they them great. They did at them though. So they did at them. They did. They added them. They, they did the eighteen hundreds at them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So they 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 they're actually really cool. Um, also, texts. page eighty four. There was that much in the antiquary. <laughs> Don't forget in the eighteen hundreds. They had a lot more free time. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Well, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, these are probably all rich folk. Yeah, so, so in Miss Hart's reply, uh, she writes, um, her reply to the Bundoran legend, uh, when on a recent visit, we heard a legend concerning a tombstone in a graveyard of Cadwell, um, which uh, I which induced us to visit the place. I think that's a bad uh, text copy. I think that's a typo. I think that's a typo. That's a typo. Well, you know what it is, is it's, it's a scan of... Of the yeah. original text document, and there's a mm-hmm. piece of software that translates that scan to text, and mm-hmm. that's where I took this text from. I also have the mm-hmm. the original scan, but I was like, gotcha, I don't, gotcha, gotcha, I didn't gotcha. want to retype <laughs> this whole thing. Okay. Um, but is it the Cadwell banker we're dealing with? No, it's it's Cadwell, the uh, the the guy you start out talking to in Elder Scrolls Online. God damn it! There's there's a lot of Cadwells we can make references to. Anyway, the, I'm. The fucking Elder Scrolls Online. I have so much I could say about that, but I'm not gonna. There's, it's a love hate. It, 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 it. Yeah. It, it tickles the itch when you need a new Elder Scrollsy thing for a little bit until the next one comes out. And uh, well, who knows we're, when? We've been waiting for a, We've been waiting for a decade. So we've been waiting for a decade, and they're making a space game before that, and it's gonna come out after the. F- t- uh, uh, space games, though. Uh, that's kind of actually more preferred for me but whatever it seems like uh, it's if you mix like elder scrolls in in mass effect into a game so on oh, it kind of love that it's, it's yeah it's 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 brandon, i hope it's good brandon you're not you're not making me like I, i'm not mad that they're doing the thing. i'm not hurting like, it you're just making me happier that they're doing the thing so okay. like this is problematic uh yeah oh and it's like uh got the fable elements of like there's you make a oh, decision. I don't care about that. Well, it, it's the you make a decision decision during like main story points, and that affects the outcome of the rest of the game and like your alignment and shit like that. Um, I in the original ha- uh, fable, I don't know if it was you who brought it over to my house. I think it was. I played it for one night. Right, I was perfectly good, perfect like paragon, and then I got bored, and then I oh. killed every single person in the Heroes Academy. <laughs> Oh, everyone's done that though. Everyone, you've got to play three three times through. You've got to do a pure good run, a pure evil run, and then a true neutral run. And that's how you played all of them. Um, anyway, the story is as follows: A young married woman went to wash her clothes in a stream near the house, and an animal called by the natives the the uh, interesting spelling. I'll call it the Dorhu because that's what it is. It's spelled Dorhu, but different. Um, <laughs> Uh, came, came out there's of, an H in there, guys. The, <laughs> there's two H's in there. There's a couple H's, some G's, you know. Uh, came out of the river and attacked her. Her husband or brother, uh, according to some accounts. I mean, we're talking. Uh, we're talking about what might be like the backwoods of an Irish town. So, like, both of those are on the table. <laughs> like, <laughs> Fair. It's, uh, Let's be real. Those are both on the table. And now this isn't a slight against Ireland. This is this is just the fact of the matter that people in rural areas are gonna people in rural areas. They they sure are gonna. Yep. Uh, so, so we'll 
both options are on the table. Uh, missing we're, we're her. We're not gonna. We're not gonna discriminate on that one. I no. mean, we can, but you know. Uh, so he he missed her because he was take she she was a wild den by the river, uh, so he went to look for her and found her dead and the beast sucking her blood. The door who mm-hmm. attacked the horse, uh, for the husband seems to have been on horseback. The horse being frightened ran away, uh, but became exhausted at a village um, called from circumstance Garinard. Garin. Um, is a, a bad horse and Ard is a high place. So the horse got attacked and ran to a place called bad horse. Um, that's I, that. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. You're becoming suspicious. Hmm. That's a little, <laughs> that's a little, uh, a little suspicious there. Also, um, if this actually happened, that dude definitely killed his, uh, his sister bride. <laughs> there's there's like zero doubt in my mind that that dude killed his sister Brian. That, that it's a it's a Charlie Day style cover up where he invents a monster otter. Pretty much, pretty much. Maybe, oh, have you seen the new It's Always Sunny? I have, and it's amazing. And so it's good. super relevant to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss Charlie's father. That I was so happy when they started doing that. Like it's not in an imaginary language. It's Gaelic. <laughs> it's pretty fucking good. Yeah. I, I love the fact that they've... So this is a minor spoiler for It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. But Charlie's not actually illiterate. He no. just speak, he, He's just... <laughs> he just only knows Gaelic. <laughs> he just only knows Gaelic. It's pretty great. If I'm, yeah. I'm not going to lie. It's... Mwah, chef's kiss. Chef's I kiss. I mean, they also, they also explained why... Uh, D's nickname was Sweet D, which yeah, <laughs> just uh, 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 that entire season was phenomenal. I wish so it was. Good. I wish it was more than eight episodes. Yeah, um, and but, Ro- Robert, I forget his last name. M, the guy, the the head guy, uh, Mac, still mm-hmm. jacked as ever. Just fucking mm-hmm. ripped for they, no reason. They really, literally they for so no much... reason. He thought it would be funny if Matt got fat and then he thought it would be funny if Matt got ripped and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's uh, amazing. That, I I I did find out that they uh pulled a bunch of episodes from Hulu. Um, did they? Yeah, particularly the one Lethal Weapon where uh Mac is in blackface for most of it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's very few shows that could potentially get away with it, and this is the closest to that. Yeah, I mean, it's still not good. No, I, I would say uh, no version of it is good. No version of it's good. No versions of it's good. But uh, let's get back to this man who's just witnessed his sister bride, his sister wife getting murdered. Yeah, so the door who is said to have gone through the horse and have killed it, um, it it being the, the, the monster, not the horse, was... Wait. What? The the horse eventually dies at at so at so bad horse the town. It, if I'm understanding this correctly, Brandon. Now this is this is the vision that I have in my head. Yeah. Horse runs away. Horse runs the to town. King, the king of the lakes, the father of all otters, just fucking chases after this horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like it, the horse is running, and then this fucking thing is just running down the road, and it just like kind of burst through from the from one end out the front is the way that i'm imagining it, it bursts through the horse the, the, it's implied the guy's still on horseback at the time even though they don't say that they imply it later um, okay so yes yeah, so this thing plows through a horse like uh, like like i'm i'm imagining stern to bow it goes through the horse like just just in one like, end out the other like rove the the opposite of um jim carrey and what nature calls Yes, that is exactly what I'm imagining. <laughs> a reverse Jim Carrey situation. It, yeah, the horse gets reversed Jim Carrey. That's horrifying. Uh, right? Like, But that's the only... like, Based on the way that this is being written and saying that it goes through them, that's yeah. the only thing I could think of. Unless it's front to back, right? But like, the horse would have to be running into it, so I yeah. can only uh, assume that it was back to front, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I'm just I was applying- picturing it perpendicular to the horse going through the side but now that you're saying if the horse is it running was, from it then it has to be it behind from it it has to be in line with the horse and behind it so it has yeah, to have so, entered the horse from behind <laughs> there, there's only one option brandon 
And it's horrifyingly hilarious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it was then speared by the husband brother, who uh, at the same time killed uh, its young one, that, that being the door who. Um, okay. It is said by some to have been uh, an animal half wolf, dog, half fish, uh, by others an enormous sea otter. The Those are two very different things. I They're very out. different. Like, the, everyone out there, like, that's that's two very different things. Yeah. Um, the enclosed uh, sketch of the tombstone was made on the spot by Mrs. Jefferson. And unfortunately, she had not the time to finish it. There was a Maltese cross below the letters. Two other tombstones are shown in connection with the story. One bearing the image of the horse and said to be that of the husband. Perhaps some antiquary may be able to throw light on the legend in the nature of the door who signed Miss L.A. How, Walkington. Um, how did they How did they not... So, okay. So, so... What do they mean she didn't... Wasn't able to finish it? Like, the, she... They were, they were on a, um, a vacation, like a trip there. So uh-huh. she started to sketch the tombstone, but then her husband was probably like, hey, the, uh, the, the, the Disneyland's closing in four hours or whatever. We got to get going. Like, they just well, didn't well, have then, time. Then why didn't she take a rubbing of it? Uh, true. Rubbings are pretty... Uh, she probably just didn't think like, about it. Or didn't have... I, what Do you make rubbing? What I, do, you, are they, do you use cray paw? You could use, like, any kind of paper, really. Uh, true. You just kind of, like, you put it on there, and if you have, like... Well, you could just, like, flatten it out, and then you could go back later and, like, fill the whole, like, do yeah. the sketchy over. So. Okay. Um, now, in a surprising turn of events, which is rare, we have more information about what happened uh, other than what Miss Walkington covered. The name so of... So, we're talking, we're talking about this the event story, that she's referring to. The event that she just spoke about. We've got more info okay. on. Okay, okay. Uh, the... The name of the murdered woman uh, in question was Grace McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Uh, McLaughlin Connolly. McLaughlin. And, and the event itself happened on sep- September 22nd, 1722. So we've got huh. to the day uh, when this happened. She lived. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure our our Great Britain listeners from the UK. So they they'll probably love us making fun of the Scottish accent. Uh, no, I think we nailed it. I, I, we're not making fun yeah. of it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's audio I, perfection. I think, I'm not going to lie. I think I went a little Scottish on it. Uh, you you probably went a little Scottish. I went a little Scottish. I'm not very good at the Irish accent. It, I don't have the lilt. <laughs> no. As they call it. Uh, so, so Grace, uh, lived in, uh, a town called Crivelia, which is close to the border of Leitrim and Sligo. And on the Sligo. northwestern I, I part, I see Sligo there. Sligo, yeah, and it's on the Sligo. north northwestern part of uh, Glenade Lake, uh, and mm-hmm. Glenade Lake. That's the lake um, at the place of her killing. So that's the, where she was washing her clothes at the time of her death. I know, I know, we're reading a story about a woman being murdered, right? Yes, but like, I kind of can't help but laugh at that name. Sligo. Because when I read it the first time, no. Glenade, because when oh. I read it the first time, I read it as Glendale, which is the, <laughs> the town that community takes place in. Oh, I miss community. And I'm just imagining like Abed and Troy doing their daily show there while this woman's getting murdered. Oh, imagine Abed finding a dead body. That would be so good. I feel like something similar to that must have happened at least once. He he did like, doesn't he do like his like freak out noise where he's just like ah? Maybe I'm not good at, at impressions. It's been a hot minute since I've seen. It's Although I've seen the I've principal seen in in stuff recently. I forget what, but yeah, he's he's in a lot. Yeah, uh, he's in a lot. Yeah. So her husband's name was Terrence, and he supposedly found the beast sleeping on her body and killed it with his dagger. Uh, before it died, it called for its mate, and it chased him and his horse, where he eventually killed it in that so, that town before. Um, so, sleeping on the body of the thing it just killed. Yeah, le- I, I, he, that that's that's new behavior that I'm not super new familiar with. Behavior he might be implying that it, like got the sleepies after eating so much. Well, she has that. Grace has a lot of tryptophan in her system. A lot so of tryptophan. Like, so Grace. like she is a she is a natural soporific. 
Um, <laughs> that is a fact. Anytime there's someone named Grace, if you eat them, you will fall asleep. You would never be able to tell, but she is a hardcore opium addict. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that's all the juices. They all of them. You know what I mean? All uh, of the juices. No. Luckily, the gravestone of Grace does still exist, proving to some extent that there is some small validity here. Uh, the people in the story at least existed. The gravestone has a carving of Terence on a horseback, killing the door two with the spear. And it's been scanned, and 3D models are available. This is some the, the first time I've come across like being able to examine something from a story this closely. Um, and the, the model is a little bit more clear than the photograph if you're Brandon, trying to look at what happened. I, I know that that's, this is not what it is, but I want to say that when I first opened this, I thought that the horse had a penis, like a large penis. Um, um, because there are, there are probably, it one, probably two, does. three, four legs. And then the man's leg is there too. Oh right? yeah. So I thought that the man's leg was just the giant horse dick. I mean, that's, we'll go with that. I prefer that actually. Preferred, preferred version of our, of history. I mean, it's probably not super far off from the, the horse's actual size no i've seen mr hands um now i would be the first to point out that this story seems a bit suspicious and that it sounds talking about a bit like terrence killed grace while she was near the river and made up the story to cover everything up what are you talking about there's it there's no reason that terrence would have killed his sister wife there's is, <laughs> I'm still assuming it's a sif- sister wife. Like is there's it, zero doubt in my mind. Like, Occam's razor would kind of imply like what's more likely giant otter monster or he murdered his wife. <laughs> his sister wife. I mean I mean maybe she got he got her his uh his sister wife pregnant and didn't want to deal with the monstrosity. Oh, wait, the otter got the wife pregnant and he didn't want no, to deal with no, the No, okay. no, Terrence did. Oh, Terrence gotcha. Did. Terrence gotcha. got got his sister wife pregnant and like he just had a feeling that uh it was it was going to be a a a chunk situation, not chunk. Um What's the name of the the dude? Is it Chunk? What's the name of the 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 guy from Go- the Goonies? I think it's Chunk that does the truffle shuffle. Chunk? No, that's that's the truffle shuffle. I'm no chunk. Wait, no, no. Oh, the Who's thing that the, like Snickers, the, the thing that like or whatever it is. I don't remember. I don't think it was Snickers. Was it Snickers? No, no. Is it, it sloth. It, it ate Snickers. Is it sloth. Sloth. It's sloth. Sloth. That's who I'm thinking of. He didn't want a sloth to come out. Oh, uh, gotcha. Is what I'm thinking happened. I'm not sure. That uh, I could be wrong. That fun fact. It's basically how they look when they come out. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, well, the soft spots are because their skull skull bones aren't... They're the, like, there's like three pieces like a tremor's worm, and they collapse mm-hmm. to fit out. And then the nurses are kind enough to tell you when you see it come out, you're going to think it's dead, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and that so- is... Almost exactly the word they said. You're, she, they said she's going to look like she's dead, but it's fine. Oh no! Her skull is just collapsed. That's so horrifying. it can fit out. Yeah, you've you've described something nightmarish to me yeah. that I never want to deal with. Yeah. Um, but Brandon, on the plus side, I did look it up. Yes, right? I looked up. Um, I looked up where this thing is. Absolutely going to be. There's, there's probably in the the 1700s. There's probably some some sister fucking going on out there. There, there's, there, there is a non single digit number <laughs> to what describe is, the number the, of sister wives. What is, what is the um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What is uh, what is, what is the equivalent of a Scot of an Irish banjo? Would you happen to know? If an Irish banjo, I think it's just a banjo. Is, is there it just na- a banjo? Uh, let's look up traditional Irish. What is an Irish banjo? Traditional Irish folk instruments. Um, they have a tenor ban- banjo. So I guess it's just a banjo. We just yeah. hear a banjo that's lilting a little bit. Uh, they've got a banzuki, which looks kind of like a, a like a really small bodied acoustic guitar. Oh, I know that one. That's, uh, a that's Godzilla's son. Oh, they've got lyre harps. 
Ooh, maybe there's a liar playing, like a oh. handheld liar. Yeah. That'd be oh, cool. what's the like a mandolin? A mandolin's playing. Ah, uh, yep. But there, like, there you go. It's dueling banjos, but on a mandolin. Yes, exactly. That's what I'm imagining. Uh, <laughs> or with like, a, or with like an Irish pan flute, like you know the like little tiny, like, like a satyr would have, hold, like a recorder. Yeah, yeah. that that it's 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 dueling banjos His, on that. Hang on, I have to. We have to look this. Has a recorder ever been used in a musical context? Outside yes. of outside of school, I think so. Recorder I, and songs. Recorder instrument. Uh, Ruby Tuesday by the Rolling to- Stones. Yeah, but like the Fool on the Hill by the Beatles. If six was nine, Jimi Hendrix. Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin. Satellite of Love, Lou Reed. It's time to talk. It's time. It's time. Talk. Talk. You know what? It's a thing. You know what I think the problem is. I've only ever heard the shitty plastic ones that you get for free. I I bet you the ones that they were playing on, like, Jimi Hendrix tracks were a little bit better. I don't know. A bit less I'm shrill, not sure. even. Are you sure? Because, like... I'm starting to suspect that what I thought in my head a recorder sounded like isn't really what they sound like. Because... In my head, anything played on the recorder sounds like everything played on the shitty flute YouTube channel. Yeah, like that's just what the recorder is to me. And so I want to point out, I'm looking up high quality recorder and high quality uh, Zap Ruder film is the first thing that pops up. Oh God, uh, what if you do? Uh, what what what's uh, recorder instrument? There are wooden recorders. There's wooden ones. So, Yamaha. Yamaha makes everything. Yamaha Soprano recorder. Three hundred ninety-eight yeah. dollars. That sounds pretty reasonable okay. for like an actual That's, instrument. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like it's not a reed-based instrument, right? Because it's. I think it's like more like a flute or what have you. Yeah. Right. Flutes don't have reeds. Because you have to have an embouchure. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a. I'm not a musician. No. I'm not a musician. I don't do music. God, I've got a recorder in my future to listen to, don't I? You definitely do. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely have a recorder. And not only that, Brandon, not only do you have a recorder to listen to, you have a recorder to listen to, and you can't stop it because it's necessary well, I can't for... escape it. it. It's necessary. <laughs> for Like, there's a grade associated with it. There is a grade associated with it. And yeah. If you stop the recorder, you are actively hurting your child. Here's here here's ironically it's both good and bad. She may actually be good at the recorder because she may have practice with other similar instruments. Here's the bad news: she uh, has practice with other. My, similar my father in law has recently gifted his other grandkids all saxophones. Oh no! So she might be okay at the recorder, but because she's been learning the saxophone, <laughs> I don't know what's worse. <laughs> Like, like dead ass i don't know what's worse brandon yeah you're you're basically that's a that's an impossible choice you're describing right there it's oh yeah yeah no my father-in-law actually very good at, at, at uh he, like all the all he has all the different types of saxophones and he yeah, recently but- just started playing the flute because he was like i can do all the saxes i gotta do something else but like still the learning curve to get to the point where it doesn't sound like shit. Oh I yeah. I feel like saxophone might be one of the worst ones. Yeah. Here's the problem with like student instruments. They're all really hard to play like compared to a medium grade one. Meaning I think like I, I know they're kids, but everyone should learn how to play on a decent instrument because it's, mm-hmm actually more difficult to play on what you get to learn on in schools on any instrument because See, they suck I was, I was lazy and i got the drums oh. but i have no rhythm <laughs> so it was a problem like, for me because when we learned guitar in school i had already i've i've been have i'd been able to play for a number of years already mm-hmm. and then i got the guitar they gave us in school and i was like this is harder to play <laughs> Than my good ones. Oh no. Because they're terrible. 
That's, I mean, that sounds about right. But that's also, uh, you have to worry about school budget, and of course they're not going to budget, like, 50, uh, I mean, like, good it, instruments. It, it, is it going to earn the school any money? Probably not, so they don't give a shit. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Uh, any hoozle. So, yeah. <laughs> More recently, in the year 2000, an artist named Sean Corcoran and his wife Molly claimed to have seen the monster in a lake on Omi Island uh, in Come- Connemara County in Galloway. He's also the person who drew the picture at the top of the episode. Okay. Um. So that sounds nothing like anything I heard described in any other context. Yeah. Like the vis- like the visualization of it is kind of nonsense to me. It's based on what he claims he saw, not on the historical claims. Okay. Um, yeah, he, I'm not, not surprised. Maybe it's not a Dober Who. Maybe it's yeah. not, the, the, not, not the Dober Who or whatever. The he fuck described it, it, fuck you pronounce it as uh, a large, dark, and uh, had orange flippers. And he claims what? it sw- swam the lake in a matter of seconds then leapt onto a boulder and gave a screech before disappearing. Oh. Okay, okay. One second. One fucking second. I'm looking up how big this lake is. I'm looking this up because fuck that. There's, I think there's multiple lakes. You, you go ahead and look it up, but I think I I intended to find it, to calculate the speed of it, and I think there was more than one lake. I see one large lake on the island. Oh, okay. And that's then we, we can actually low. figure out the speed of it. Um, let's see. There's multiple lakes, but, like, there's the big lake. No, yeah. there's not multiple lakes. There is one lake on that island, and it looks uh pretty decently sized based on this map. Yeah. My computer is, is killing me, is dying, so I can't really actually do in C2, like... Oh, you're on the thing. You're on the thing book. I'm on my laptop, yeah. Yeah. So this is... This is my laptop hates Firefox, so... Um, but I don't believe that for a fucking second. No. Uh, well, I have my doubts about the creature's ability to ram a horse to death. Uh, Ireland does have otters and Irish otters average about three feet in length. So how, are we going to learn about how we don't know how otters are born or like how all <laughs> otters are like, how all otters are sinners. <laughs> they, they're just sin incarnate. Because, like, like, that, anytime we talk about, anytime you talk about a normal creature on this show, Brandon, it turns into, I just don't, I don't trust it anymore. All otters are just a different stage in the life cycle of a horse. (laughs) We don't know where otters really come from. (laughs) (laughs) And the ferret is the preceding life cycle stage. Oh, like what comes between otter and horse, though? Uh, that's why you never see... We we know they breed somewhere, but we've never seen an otter egg. <laughs> uh, well, well, the Wait, jo- what if it's platypi? What if a platypus is the, the, the origin point of a it's otter? It's pl- platypus and somehow they otter all to leave Australia. I don't know. Oh, Makes this, no fucking sense. The cycle's complete. It's platypus to otter to horse... And as we all know, when a horse's hair falls into mud, it turns into an eel. And there's the so, yeah. cycle of life. Yeah. That's how you get eels. That's how Platypus you get eels. Eggs. Uh, well, the giant otter lives in South America. Uh, the point is that this is not wildly different in size than the legendary Dober who. Uh, uh, I want to point out, you didn't mention it, but the giant otter is about six feet long. Oh yeah, sorry, I skipped over that. About six, yeah, six yeah. feet long. So the even though it's not in Ireland, otters do get to almost the size of the Darhu. Um, yeah, I mean that's that that's not surprising to me, right? Like yeah, like eight, when you're really if you're being really like serious, like seven feet is big, but it's not like impossibly big. Right? Yeah, seven feet's the point at which. You might not be able to beat a monster in a fist fight, but is not so large that it is like a mythical legendary thing. But I mean, well, no, no, you're not going to be a, all right. You're not going to beat a hum, a seven foot humanoid, but like yeah. seven foot quadrupeds are not that weird. No. Like, at all. Right. Like, like a dog can be like six feet easily. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, stem to stern, 
they're going to be like that's not hard right like yeah. that's not an impossible thing oh uh, huh. do you know do you know how many dog like i'm 5'10 i've had dogs that put their paws up on my shoulders and like look me in the eye john did you this is oh uh, this made my brain remember a thing so there's an episode of one of the podcasts that we mutually enjoy that's about bad things did you hear the episode about horses i think it's uh the which, bastards the bastards i, ha- I behind the bastards heard, uh but i, think I don't it, think i've heard i don't think i've heard the horses episode no um there's uh so let's say there's an episode about how they that you put eels inside of horses butts Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. I read about. It. I watched. I listened to that one. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. This it was just to make me it remember s- that. You, you put eels inside of a horse's butt to make it seem like it was uh, more lively than it actually was. I bet you that worked great too. <laughs> it did until it like ate the eel ate its way out of the horse. Yeah. So that's, that's usually where the problem happened. But the but problem yeah, no, is they, is in Ireland. So in Ireland, uh-huh. you put an otter in a horse's butt to make it seem more lively. <laughs> And that's what oh, no. happened during the original tale. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it was just a horrible. It was a horrible uh, scam gone wrong. Is uh it's the worst. <laughs> so what actually happened? Now, now I have a theory, Brandon. Now I have a theory. Lady was the one who was trying to put the otter in the horse's asshole, right? Oh, like she's got the otter. She's got the otter. She's just like, Grr. yeah. Horse, not a fan. No. Kicks her right in the fucking head. It, <laughs> it bucks. Just caves her in. Mm-hmm. That was uh, it. That's all it was. I have the, I have the solution to the story. Yeah. We're and done. the husband. Episode over. Hu- the husband n- knows he can't say what really happened because then everyone will know that the horses they've been eating, it's, it's all a scam. So to cover up mm-hmm. the scam that he and his wife were working on, he made up the otter to cover up yep. the caving in his mm-hmm. wife's face yeah. for inserting there, an otter Brandon, up its ass. Brandon, there's always a kernel of truth. In every story, there's a kernel of truth. Yeah. In this story, it's the otter. <laughs> it's the otter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why the horse ran away to another town because mm-hmm. they won't put otters up its ass. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> the perfect crime. Oh... Uh, now, however, it's time for John's favorite theory about any cryptid, and it's the prehistoric holdover theory. Don't make me, Yay. Don't make me leave. Like, I'm going to walk out of the room. Uh, now, luckily, this time there is no traction to it that I can see. The first I mean, there's no... There's no traction like, to any of them. Um, not, like, like, if we're being, like, in terms of, like, le- like real traction and, like, real attention, there's zero. Yeah. No, yeah, fake yeah. phony attract traction. Yeah, there's that, but like, it's a bunch of people trying to prove a like dogma. So yeah. fuck them. Uh, so the first time I see such a thing come up is a 2017 online article in the Dep- in the Independent, an Irish newspaper, titled "Does Prehistoric Otter Explain Door Who Myth?" Um, well, it- wait, <laughs> wait. So why would you? Go- okay, okay. Wait a fucking second, Brandon. Yes? Wait a fucking second. Why would you immediately jump to prehistoric otter when there is a living otter that is as long that, as this. the legend? <laughs> what? Yeah, there's some conclusions like, that they're you, jumping to. Like You don't even you like you don't even need to come up with anything. Yeah. That, like if you're trying to explain something, you have something. Yeah. Like they right? could have just like, gone you, to the out of place animal. Like, they could have just done alien big cats. But alien otters. Alien big otters. Yeah. ABOs. Yeah. And it's literally called the giant otter. It would be the most fitting. Like, it it literally is a perfect match. Yeah. (laughs) Like, Uh, you don't need to work at it, right? Yeah. You could just be like. I don't know. Some fucking otter came from wherever the fuck it is in South America because some asshole brought it back from South America because it's 1722 and people bring all sorts of shit back from America. Yeah, it literally could have been like just like uh, like circus escaped. 
Cause, like, because they bring foreign creatures everywhere. A circus otter could have just escaped. But, but it, we already know that the 1722 story is bullshit because it was a woman su- shoving an otter up a horse's ass and yeah. getting kicked in the head. So, like, we don't even need to, like, even dis... Like, we don't even need to explain how an otter got there. It was just a, it was just a lady shoving a horse up a... Uh, shoving, shoving a horse up an <laughs> otter's ass. Oh, God. <laughs> The most terrifying looking centaur ever. Oh no! <laughs> An otter tour? An otter tour. The oh. pained look on its face. Well, it's dead, but. It's, de- <laughs> it's definitely dead. You just see, like, a mouth being stretched way too far wide open and a single eyeball peeping out. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a mask for the horse at that point. <laughs> it's a horse mask. <laughs> So uh, how do you deal with how do you deal with flies for your horse? Oh, I just shove an otter on there. What? <laughs> what do you mean you shove an otter on there? You know, I just I just take an otter, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> well, you know the thing you've heard of otter cases, right? That's just what you do with your phone to make an otter look more lively. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, basically, like. Maybe that's how otter boxes got started. Oh, Maybe someone just shoved an otter their phone up an otter. Yeah, and we're like, exactly. All right, cool. Let's just re- let's just replicate this with rubber. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. So the article reads: um, Scientists have discovered the uh, the otter had formidable rel- had a formidable relative that was a predator six million years ago. Samogale uh, Miletatura uh, was the size of a wolf and weighed about 50 kilograms. It also had an unusually powerful bite, which would have allowed it to crush shells or bones of birds and mammals. It then Did you can- know that otters have a favorite rock? They, sea otters, and they, they keep do it have a couch. favorite. It's adorable. It's so cute. It's so cute. When are we going to get a Pokemon that is an otter with a rock? Ashwat. Does Ashwat use a, a rock though? Ashwat has a Ashwat has a favorite clam that it has on its chest. Oh, that's adorable. Like uh, Ashwat is literally the thing that you were just talking about. I yeah. just wanna I wanna get ahead of that one. <laughs> uh, um It's a starter Pokemon, Brandon. It, listen, the, I played Pokemon, but I had to do it at like three o'clock in the morning every time. Brandon, Brandon, there are what? Uh, twenty four total starter Pokemon. I think right now. Yeah, it's not. It's not that big. Yeah, it's not that big of a pool. And also, that wasn't in. That wasn't in. Uh, Was Ashwat not in the new uh, no, Brilliant Diamond no. Shining Pearl? That's oh. um. That's Piplup, uh, Chimchar, and um. Well, I knew it wasn't a starter, but it, it wasn't available Turtwing. elsewhere. No, you can't get it in that game. Uh, only pre Gen four things you can get in that game. Oh, interesting. Oh, that and, makes uh, sense. Ashwat's Gen Five. That yeah, that makes sense. Um, this has been this has been a uh, a bit of a lesson from your po- local Pokemon professor. Uh, that's don't go in the tall grass. Don't go in the tall grass. None of you have Pokemon. It's it's gonna you're gonna die. Yeah. Also, th- th- your comments are disturbingly close <laughs> to being actual comments about Pokemon from an actual Pokemon professor. Um, <laughs> just so you know, anytime you talk about this shit, you're getting more and more disturbingly close to like, there's going to be a time when you, when you boot up your switch and then you fall through the screen into the world. And I just want you to know that you're inching yourself closer to that reality. If that's really what you want. <laughs> I think I'm going to pay. I, I think I'm going to pay someone to commission. Like I'm going to commission someone to draw me like professor Elm from gold and silver. You can do um, that. You, yeah, no, I you, think I'm going to do it. You when can I commission get my PhD. people to draw you as things. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna do that when I get my PhD. Do and it. I'm gonna have it. Every introductory class that I ever teach will have that picture on it. I wholly support that decision. <laughs> okay. Now that uh. we're done with that, let's go on and, and talk about why this person is. Let's let's try and figure out why this person thinks they need to go to a fucking prehistoric holdover for something when there is an animal that fucking exists. Uh, okay, so the article continues that Dr. Jack Tsing um, from the University of Buffalo, who led the study of the prehistoric otter, <coughs> otter's fossilized skull, said that we we don't know for sure, but we think that this otter was more of a top predator than uh, living current. Uh, 
living species the king of, of the north. north. It's the king of the north. Um, the king of the north. Our findings uh, imply that Siamagale uh, could crush much harder and larger prey than any living otter can. The article reads maybe, like maybe they have a favorite turtle. Maybe they have a favorite tortoise. And they're just using that to crush shit. Yeah. The, the the article reads like someone working for an Irish paper saw something about a large otter fossil, recalled the doe or who, and then just whipped something up real quick. Um, I mean, see- you got to get that word count, man. <clears throat> you got to get that word count. It, seeing that Dr. Jack Seng said nothing about the doe or who or even implied Siamagale could still be around. I presume that the quote was taken out of context without his knowledge in order to give the living fossil idea some more traction. And in (laughs) fact, I know it was because I found the original quote, which by the way, they didn't source or cite anything. They just directly ripped that quote. Of of course they did it. And the, the, the original quote on the Cleveland Museum of Natural History website was written by John Mangles, the science communications officer for the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And the article itself was about the Siamagali's jaw strength. Nothing to do with it being a fucking, <laughs> like, prehistoric or whatever. Uh, unlike can the, the Siamagali see why kids love the taste of cinnamon toast crunch? <laughs> it, it'll be a gotcha. great cereal brand uh, mascot thing. Um, gotcha. But unlike the independent, I cite my sources. So you can find a link to that article below uh, in Dr. Jack's bite strength study report titled Feeding Capability in the Extinct Giant Cymogaly Melitutra in Comparative Mandibular Biometrics Ooh. of li- Living L- Lutrine. It's actually oh, a cool actually, little study. So like, like c- this com- is actually a legit study because it's in nature, and nature is hard as fuck to publish in. Yeah, it's like a real and I thing. I know that. <laughs> I know that. Hard as fuck to publish in. Um, also, has nothing to do with me, so I'll never publish in it, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just a woman shoving a nodder up a, a horse's ass. That's all it is. That's what I'm going with. That's what I'm going with. Anywho. <laughs> so, uh, I guess that's it for this week's episode. Indeed it is. Um, so, our website is com. Our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. So is our Twitter. Um, our email is CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. Uh, and we have a Patreon. Uh, there's a link in the show notes. And uh, we want to thank our jackalopes, uh, Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, Matthew Smith, and uh, I think there was one more on this list that we don't have on there. The, uh, Bushcraft um, Kelso? I think so. I'm going to just read his actual thing that he wrote. I got to yeah. go through the Blackface uh, episode one. It's worth yeah. Pete. This one, I, I forget when I wrote this one. This I don't know. How, uh, I have to go through and update my uh, and, my list for everybody. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's Bushcraft Kelso. Um, but, 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 I do uh, believe my, my my yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, we also have a Facebook group that I don't do fucking anything in personally. Um, I think. I think uh, Lenwood is the only person who. There's other people, so other people do post stuff in there, and they they post good things. I just don't. I'm not a huge Facebook guy, but I pop in. Yeah. Once in a while, I go, "Hey, look, there's interest. There is actual interesting things. So if you're interested in cryptid stuffs, you can go in there and look at other things." I ignore Facebook, kind of. Um, It's, it's not my place. I I use it for Messenger, and that's about it. (laughs) Yeah, I, I use it for like. I have family members who don't have that's my way of contacting them. Yeah. Um the Discord, however, we do actually keep an eye on for the most part and we actually interact with people there. Um we've gotten a few new people and we also got a podcast that immediately left and I was very confused. We get a and lot of people person... that join and immediately leave because they think it's a yeah. cryptocurrency. There was that one guy who joined thinking it was a cryptocurrency podcast and didn't leave for a minute. 
and I, I really? was did I screenshot this? They thought it was. Oh, they thought I, it was. I might have screenshotted this. Hang on. I don't remember that one. Oh. There was the guy who I think fundamentally doesn't understand the nature of this podcast, though, who recently uh, came in and advertised his own Discord. I don't know if he's still in the Discord. Yeah. Uh, um, if you enjoy the podcast, you did. I found it. Uh, message. I'm gonna uh, uh to John. <laughs> this is thrilling. This is some thrilling plug action, Brandon. It's thrilling. It's so, it's so good. But you've got to yeah. read it while I do my plugs because it's the funniest shit. Okay. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Supposedly, Spotify is getting a rating. Uh, uh, Hell yeah! Tool for podcasts. So I know Spotify is where most of you listen to this podcast because I have the numbers. Um, <laughs> so if you ev- once you get access to the rollout for that, be sure to uh, rate the podcast. Yes. Um, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. Um, we do them sometimes. It, yeah. It also it's it also gets harder to find new things every time that we find something. Yeah, a solid portion because... of time has turned into looking for th- new things, specifically things that are both new and you have stuff to write about. Like, oh, there's a lot of things yes. where you can get, like, a paragraph and that's it. Yep, there's there's a Venn diagram there, and the... they are not very <laughs> close to each other. <laughs> They're nearly to two say... separate circles at this point. Um... Uh, yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com, and my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Um, I'm uh, mu2057 on Instagram, Twitter, I'm JF Dunham. Website is johndunhamgames.com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs>